extraordinary range of decisions being taken today, the consequences of which will make or break your time as Prime Minister, won't they? Yeah, and, and it, it, of course they're far more important than that. Uh, this is a, I, what I hope is a resolution to the uh, issue of the UK's relations with the EU that have bedeviled politics. Uh, both uh, major parties have had an identical uh, problem for a long time about this uh, this question and I think we've we've come to a good place and what it gives us what this deal gives us is I would say uh, pretty much the best of both worlds because you have a gigantic uh, free trade agreement but you also have the flexibility that people wanted and that uh, we all care about to do things differently and better uh, if you uh, if you choose and it means certainty you know from January the 1st uh, after all this uh, four and a half years, we got certainty for uh, for business, we got certainty for hauliers, uh, for aviation, um, and you know if this means uh, the end of uh, of uh, the debate in in the, in the in the country, then we all move on to something else. Uh, that'd be great because there are frankly, you think about the future of the UK. What matters far more for our long term prosperity uh, are skills of of our young people. Uh, making sure we tackle uh, problems in uh, in social care in the NHS. These are time and time again. Uh, what the British people have found is that the the issues that they want politicians to to focus on uh, have been swamped by this whole question about uh, Europe and the, and the EU. And we've now got a, a solution. So we're going to get on with our agenda, unite and and level up, deliver on all the things uh, that we want. To do uh, transform our, our NHS, get COVID uh, beaten uh, as fast as we can, uh, and then uh, continue with our program for the country. And so, it's it's it it is a, a very very important day for the UK. There's no question. But now is the moment for us to make the most of the opportunity. I'm going to come back to the detail of the free trade agreement, but people are obviously today. Um, Desperate to know more about the vaccine rollout. Yep. Will you commit to vaccinating two million people a week? Well, I, I, first thing to say, obviously, is how pleased I am that we have uh, an AstraZeneca uh, vaccine approved by the MHRA. Uh, it's very good news that we have a UK-made uh, vaccine. Uh, the that gives us great scope to, to roll it out fast. Don't forget the but advantage two million of a week. That's what people are expecting. I, I don't. I don't want to to commit to numbers, but what I can say is that we will uh, obviously uh, deliver and distribute as, as as many as we can, dependent on the supply. One point. But, but the one, numbers are: there are twenty million high priority people. Uh, the health secretary has said, you know, those people will get it by the spring. That means two million a week. I, I, I'm I'm not going to to get into numbers, except to say that uh, we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. And I, but I would stress one advantage of the, of the AZ vaccine is that it um, is, is capable of being distributed at room temperature. And this is a massive thing for the world uh, because uh, it, Pfizer is great, but you have to, keep, you have to send it around to, to care homes uh, at minus 70. And so when we look at what we're trying to do for these, these priority one groups, particularly in, in care homes, there are big logistical obstacles that we're facing with, with Pfizer. That we overcome with, with AZ, with the AstraZeneca vaccine. So uh, there's the prospect of rolling it out in those areas faster. I know you want to have a sort of... Um, well, I think British people want of to have people, confidence about when they're going to get it. Of course, and I totally understand that. Um, I, but I would um, respectfully say that we've only just got MHRA approval. I think m most people would agree that the UK did well in being the first developed country to get an improved vaccine into people's arms uh, in the first place. Uh, we hope to have done uh, almost a million, I think, uh, by today. Uh, we will continue to, uh, to accelerate, to roll it out as fast as we can. But I don't want to um, you know, give you all the, all the numbers uh, now because the numbers are, are moving around. They depend on how fast we can crank up supply and so, what, what, but, what people will want to focus on I, I, I can I can I can understand and, and I bet you will want to know is and you, you've put the sort of 20 million figure out there mm. uh, when is the moment by which we will have done all that when is the moment by which 
Um, we can feel a bit safer. Yeah, and I totally get that. All I can tell you today, Robert, is that uh, we're gonna go as fast as we can. As soon as we feel that we can uh, give people more confidence about when that sort of crossover moment uh, happens, uh, we'll do that. I think what Matt said earlier on today about the spring uh, is right, but obviously we'll go as fast as we can. Spring is a bit of a movable piece, but I want well, to talk to you about another aspect of this crisis. You're famous for somebody who sees the glass half full, but if you look at what is happening in hospitals yeah. right now, many of them are being overwhelmed with COVID-19 patients. Can you capture for us the magnitude of the seriousness of the situation now? The situation is very serious now, and people need to understand that. And you're right to point to what's happening in uh, some hospitals at, at the moment. Our, our NHS are working under incredible pressure because of the, the volume of, uh, of COVID patients. And this is a real, real uh, issue now. The, the new variant is accounting for 60% of, of new cases, uh, if not more. And that is, and as you know, it's 70% it's more transmissible. It spreads much more easily. That's, that's why we're facing the, uh, the pressure that we are right now. It's also why we've taken the, uh, the decisive action that uh, we have in putting more areas, alas, uh, into higher tiers. And I know that it's tough for people, but it really has to be done. There's, there's a further consequence, uh, which is that it will make it, that the pressure of the, of the new variant uh, will make it uh, more challenging for us to get uh, kids back into school, though that is and remains the number one priority of the country. And I stress that schools are safe and, you know, you, you, your kids are not uh, at risk. They're much, much less risk. Obviously, but you are than, having than to pull the people. lever of, of shutting uh, secondary schools in tier four areas because it is the only way of driving the vaccine down. Well, you, you, what we will try to do is keep schools open that's been our national priority uh, throughout but we will also be using the uh, utensil that we didn't have back in march of uh, big testing programs and the lateral flow test if you remember hadn't been invented uh, back in march I mean, you know, the vaccines only just been invented the lateral flow test was an idea that you know everybody was talking about on on you know sketching out but we didn't have one we now have tens hundreds of millions of these lateral flow tests, uh, either here or, or arriving uh, or being made in the country, or they will be made in the country from, uh, from next month, uh, sorry, from February, mm. uh, we hope. And mm. that, is, that offers you know, a, another way forward, another, uh, another tool in our, in our box. It's not enough. And I've got to stress to, to you that the, the hope of the vaccine and, and testing alone are not going to, to, to be enough in the next few weeks uh, and, and possibly longer. Because uh, the virus has been spreading very fast and it's now in the, in the, the NHS is under huge pressure. And so it's now in these very tough winter months that we really, really must keep focus. How long are we going to be living under these restrictions? Well, I don't want to sort of go back to the to the to the previous answer. I, I do think, as as Chris Whitty as Chris Whitty has said, uh, I think Chris Whitty said uh, uh, the chief medical officer set a sort of uh, terminus of uh, April the fifth, Easter, uh, where he thought things would be much 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 better. The issue will be, and you're right to to put your finger on it. The issue will be the burden mathematically of in, 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 in tier four. The burden on people is. It is. They want to know how long they're going to be living under these onerous conditions. Well, that will depend on how fast we can get the virus under control with tough tiering, uh, with testing and with rolling out the vaccination uh, programme. I'm not going to give you um, a, 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 a deadline, uh, but you, you've, you've heard what uh, I've said about April. If that is the terminus antiquem, if, if, and it's a big if, if the tiering can work to bring the virus under control, if the vaccine uh, rollout proceeds fast enough in it and uh, we are able to, uh, to inoculate, to protect mm. uh, those millions that you talked about, the most vulnerable groups, uh, then there's a world in which that date could be brought forward, who knows by how many weeks. But that's, that's obviously what we're aiming for. 
I can't give you that date uh, today. I can't give you the numbers, uh, the pace of the rollout today. What I can tell you is we have both Pfizer and AstraZeneca uh, now on stream. We're the first country in the world to be putting the vaccine into people's arms in a major way. We're going to continue to accelerate. We've been looking forward. If I could just look back for a second. In September, your scientific and political advisors were telling you to lock down then. You made a mistake in not following their advice. Well, there are always very difficult trade-offs, and you've just spoken rightly about the, the pain, the pressure that people are under in, in Tier 4. And what we had then was what we have today, which is a, a quite sharply differentiated regional picture. And uh, there, are, there are different uh, degrees of, of, uh, of rate at which the, different rates at which the virus has been spreading in, in different parts of the country. So that's why we went for the tiering system, and that's why we continue uh, with the tiering system. And actually, if you look at what the tiers did, um, particularly uh, in, in, in tier three, uh, you look at what uh, combined with testing, they, they, it was working. And if you, if you look didn't at... Didn't press it down if the you, infection enough though, did well, it? And, that's, and, and well, we went in, the new variant arrived when there was too much infection in the country of the old strain. That's not quite true. Because if you look at the graphs, that's fascinating you should say that, but if you look at the graphs of what was actually happening to the old strain under tier three, uh, it was being controlled. And you, and you should talk to the, uh, to the scientists. It's, it's quite interesting. The, the, the numbers of, of uh, infections... I no, no, seriously, I mean, you, you should yeah, look, sure. get, get, get sure. those graphs up, sure. because it, it is quite, it's quite fascinating. I, I, I do think... So what you're the, saying the, is you so don't the, have so any regrets so about the comp, that decision. The comp, well, obviously, we'll, there will come a time to look back on every decision that's been taken by government for, over, for, for many, many months. We've always tried to strike a, a, a very, very difficult balance. There are no, e believe me, there are no good or easy choices in fighting a pandemic like this, because you, you face, as, as, you, as you say, uh, harm to uh, uh, the health of the population on the one hand, harm to the economy uh, on the other. You have to find a way through. The, the, the good news, uh, the, well, the difficult news, the tough news, the sad news today, is that the new variant is really proving tough to, to fight and we need to uh, be doing everything we can. That's why we're, 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 we're toughening up the tiers. Uh, we have encouraging news on the vaccines. But, you know, to turn around your basic question, which is when will all this end, mm. um, it's vital for people to realise that the answer to that question is not now. And the, the, it is vital for everybody to continue to follow the basic disciplines. And I think in the run-up to New Year, uh, New Year's Eve, people really need to, he to hear that. There can be a lot of transmission on, on New Year's Eve. There can be a lot of people who accidentally uh, allow the bug to, to spread in a way that sadly will put somebody else in hospital. Please, please, let's all think about that uh, over the coming days. This is the moment for... As a, for keeping discipline, hands, face, space, you know it all. Uh, it sounds hackneyed, but there's a, there's a risk people will forget it. And one final thing, this is the day when our new relationship with the EU goes yes. into law, and that new relationship should condition our relations with the whole world, we hope, after COVID is defeated. So in that sense, it's a, it's a very big day. You talk about the importance of getting back our freedom. In the coming year, what will you be doing with that newfound freedom? Don't talk about trade deals because we know about trade deals. What else will you be able to do outside of the, EU, of the EU this year that you wouldn't have been able to do inside the EU? Well, don't forget that we've already taken back control of our borders. So just from Monday uh, or just from the, the January 1st, uh, there will be a, uh, a new uh, regime in place that allows yep, us to control our, our, our immigration. <laughs> we will have substantial sums of money uh, which will return to the to the people uh, of this country. Uh, we will be able to a drop in the notion of the current deficit. Let's be clear. Uh, but substantial sums of real hard cold cash that we'll be able to use on our priorities, such as the NHS, a point I think I may have made uh, in the past. Uh, we, will, we will also have the freedom to uh, control our own laws, to, to write our own subsidy regimes, to do free ports, for instance, 
uh, to, to champion Sunrise, you know, b b brilliant uh, industries in which the UK uh, leads the world. Uh, uh, green technology, biosciences, uh, all that uh, battery technology, uh, we will be able to do things differently and do them better. And don't forget, uh, we will have access to uh, the, the EU uh, market. And, and to be fair, they will also have access to our market, which is their their biggest and most important uh, uh, trade, well, their biggest and most important uh, export market. And so it's mutually beneficial. And you know, I know that there will be loads of people watching this who, you know, who are glad that the whole thing's uh, over, but also want the, the UK to be a proud uh, European country. And we're going to continue to be a proud European country. We'll be there for our friends. We'll be the number two uh, contributor to NATO. We've just massively expanded the defence budget, uh, as, as you know. Uh, we'll be picking up a lot of the slack for our, our European friends and partners. We're incredibly useful uh, around all parts of the, uh, uh, the European area in, in uh, doing all sorts of peacekeeping and uh, stopping uh, piracy and heaven knows what. We do all that. Uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll stick up for our values around the world. This is going to be an amazing year for the UK. We're leading, we're leading the world in tackling climate change. We're hosting the COP26 summit in, in, uh, in Glasgow in, in November. And don't forget, it was the UK that was the first uh, developed country, again, to, uh, to go for net zero uh, by 2050. And we're going to work with the, the EU to do that. So I hope people will be positive about this. I really think there's a massive amount to be cheerful about and when you look at this uh, agreement. It's the end of the bickering. It's a new future. It's the UK as a, as, a, as a free independent nation campaigning for the things we love and believe in, but also having uh, a great deal with our, with our European friends. Look, finally, 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 it's a very s s small, slightly personal question. Some people, okay. Personal about you or me? About you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it could be about me if you like. I can't think of it. You might be interested in it. But just... You, there have been times when people think you have been too optimistic about Christmas, for example. Have you learned anything over the last few months that makes you think, actually, you've just got to be a bit more cautious? There were plenty of people who told me that it was impossible to get a uh, free trade deal with the EU. I think you might have been one of them, uh, in, in which you were able to- I don't think I had <laughs> oh, well, an anyway, opinion. Maybe, maybe, maybe you didn't offer an opinion, but there were plenty of people who thought that uh, it was impossible to have a free trade deal with the EU, zero tariff, zero quota, where you weren't obliged to remain uh, locked in their regulatory uh, arrangements. They're, they're oh, all no, we're not getting on with this. But Starmer has a point and, that, and, that, and that, actually, that if we get out of their regulations, they're going to whack tariffs no, on no, us. No, no, look at the, look at the, you haven't read the agreement. I have. You haven't read the agreement. It, it, that's absolutely, it's not what it says. Anyway, keep uh, it's not, it's not what it says. They have to prove detriment to an independent arbitrator over a period of six months. They do. Uh, it's unlike anything else, and it's very, very unlikely to be, uh, to be invoked. And by the way, we might, you know, we might, as I said the other night, there might be things where we want to do things differently and better with um, uh, animal welfare provisions, uh, you know. But you're doing uh, a brilliant thing of getting off the question I was asking, which is, do, do you recognise that sometimes you're too optimistic during a crisis? Well, I, sometimes it's necessary uh, when everybody is telling you you can't achieve something uh, to, to go ahead and, and do it. And uh, that's what we've done uh, with uh, this deal. I, I'm very pleased with it. With, with COVID, uh, it's an incredibly tough time for the country. Um, uh, if, if, you, if you say, have I, have I, have I sometimes uh, erred on, on the side of, uh, of overall uh, positivity? Uh, well, you know, uh, I've, tried to, I've tried to keep everybody going and keep things moving forward. And actually, we're in a position now uh, where the UK has vaccinated, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as I say, uh, probably getting on for uh, a million people. We hope to roll out the vaccine as fast as we possibly can. But uh, before I, before I, you know, I get carried away, get to a, before I get carried away, regret, uh, isn't it? <laughs> well, before I get carried, what I will say yeah. uh, is that I don't think that this is the moment for relaxation, uh, and this is not the moment to uh, take anything for granted, because the situation is extremely difficult and it's extremely tough, and the pressure on our hospitals is immense, and. Uh, that's why we're ta we've taken the measures that we have. That's why uh, we're doing uh, everything we can to, to protect 
schools, uh, there are still tough weeks and probably months ahead for this country. There is no doubt about that. Uh, but do I think that by the spring, things will be much better? Am I uh, succumbing uh, to my Famous uh, optimism. To, to my to my in my optimistic bias, yes, I do think things will be much better. I do think uh, that this country will get through it uh, very strongly indeed, uh, and I do think people have a great deal uh, to look forward to. But are things going to be tough for the next few, few weeks and months? Yes, they undoubtedly are. Prime Minister, many Thank thanks. Thank you.